Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 19th of July 2012. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up today's Steam deals. Sorry we're a little bit late this time around. I've been too busy getting you really awesome footage of forthcoming games that you might like. Yes, I know, I'm a terrible person. All right, let's look at what's available. Bear in mind, once again, that all of these deals have a tendency to roll over 12 hours after the daily deals actually end. So if you picked up this video just a little bit late, don't worry, the chances are the stuff is still on there. Also remember that a lot of sales are repeated in the flash sales and community choices over to the right. So if you miss something in particular, then keep an eye on the flash deals because it may reappear once again. Also, don't buy Jurassic Park the video game because it's got awful. I've had a few people ask me about putting footage in the background. There's a couple of problems with that. The first one being it would take a very, very long time, so these videos would never get out on time. Secondly, if I were to just put the trailers for the games in the background, YouTube's been on this binge lately of copyright flagging you for doing that. Not a very good thing. Turns out that companies are very stupid and don't actually want their products advertised, so we can't really use trailers anymore in our videos. Yeah. Don't even get me started. I could go on all day. All right, let's start it off the way we mean to go on, as always, with the indie bundle number eight this time around. What does it contain? What delicious games will we find? Okay, so once again, same price as always. $9.99, €9.99 tier one, and $6.99 in tier two, £6.99 for this as well. It contains Demolition Inc. I did a WTF as of this, Soul Exodus, and Swords and Soldiers HD. So click the logos if you want to see more in-depth views on this. Demolition Inc. is deceptive because it looks like it's kind of go around and wreck everything kind of game. It's actually more like a puzzle game. You have to use various abilities to manipulate the environment to cause as much destruction as possible. It's kind of fun, actually. I enjoyed it, but I don't know how much replayability it has. I'm going to go with probably not a lot because it seems like you have to go a very specific way in order to solve each level and I think I would like just a little bit more freedom in that game. It's still a cool concept though. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Horde. I didn't play this but I'll tell you who did. Yogscast. Go and check their video out on Horde. All I know is it's a game where you are a dragon collecting as much treasure as possible, terrorizing the villagers, raising things to the ground, burning knights, kidnapping princesses and stuff like that. It's supposed to be pretty fun in multiplayer. Might be worth a look. Soul Exodus. Oh dear. Well, the problem with this game is that they tried to make something that was like Free Space, but wasn't anywhere near as good as Free Space. The missions are described as epic. What that usually means is they're too damn long, they're elongated, the pacing is all off. I really didn't enjoy it that much. Ship customization is almost non-existent, the voice acting is terrible, the story's not very good. It's just, it's not very good and I wish it was, because I love games like this, I really do, I think they're awesome. I was a big fan of Free Space Starlancer, Freelancer, and all sorts of other games like that, but unfortunately, Soul Exodus does not scratch that itch. Swords and Soldiers HD. This is a nice looking game. It's essentially a side scrolling strategy. And by that, I mean you send a lot of units at the other guy and eventually push him back. It's a little bit of a tug of war going on. It's fun for the most part. It just gets really grindy and samey. That's something I don't like about it. It seems like you're just not really strategizing anything. You're throwing a lot of units at your opponent until they eventually die. It's one of those beer and pretzel games, as in you can play it for 10 to 20 minutes on your lunch break, you probably find it fun, but if you play it for any kind of long period of time, chances are you get a little bit bored of it. And Wings of Prey, I have no idea why this is even in here. Like, this, is, this, is be this isn't an indie game, surely. Apparently it is, though, because it was actually released and published by the same company, Gaijin Entertainment, on the PC. This is actually something of a spiritual successor to IL-2 Stormovich, which was a very, very hardcore... World War II Flight Simulator. It's considered one of the best ones. Wings of Prey is a bit more arcadey, but it keeps a lot of the good stuff like the flight model and the damage modeling. It's a great looking game. And it's got a lot of awesome action in it. The problem I had with it was that it was really scripted. It feels like every mission plays out in exactly the same way every time you replay it, and that's because there's a ton of scripted stuff going on. And as a result, it does feel just a little bit on rails. It still gives a great, authentic, fun experience, especially if you have a joystick, and I'd recommend that you do for a game like this. But I did not enjoy it quite as much as I would have if it was just a little bit more freeform and if it was a little bit more dynamic. It's like when the same thing happens over and over again, it kind of breaks the immersion value, and I didn't really see amazing AI or anything like that in the game. So, bit of a shame. It's still pretty fun, honestly, and if you're looking for... A game that's got, I suppose, balance between realism and authenticity and arcadey nature, then Wings of Prey is a good option. Overall, a fairly interesting bundle, honestly. A big variety of games available and not too shabby. All right, let's move on, shall we? Alan Wake, 75% off. Takes it down to 10 bucks, 8 euros 99. 
£7.74. This also knocks down the price of American Nightmare as well, and you can pick up the bundle, which includes the extras in the collector's edition, as well as the original game and American Nightmare, and you'll save a couple of dollars on it. That said, bear in mind that the money you save is kind of sunk into the Collector's Edition extras, which includes the soundtrack, which is pretty good, and a bunch of PDF stuff and art, which you might not be interested in. Now, Alan Wake is arguably a survival horror game. Some people would say it's more of a survival action game, but then some games are more scary to some people as opposed to others. It's a difficult argument to really make. What I will say about Alan Wake is that while it took ages to get it over to the PC, the PC port is one of the best PC ports ever made. It actually takes a lot of guts, I think, to do what the developers did. Originally, they released it on 360. It's by Remedy. Remedy are pretty cool. Remedy have made a lot of very good games in the past. Remedy were, of course, responsible for Max Payne 1 and 2. Bear that in mind. And they said at the time, this is designed to be played on a couch. Now, a couple of years later, they ate their words and self-funded this port. Nobody funded this for them. They published it themselves. This is essentially indie because it was done without a publisher. Nobody gave them money to do this. They decided, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. And they did it right. My God, did they do it right. Holy hell, did they do it right. The PC port of Alan Wake is astonishingly good. Not only was the game released at a lower price, including all of the DLC that they put in afterwards, some of which is really good, I might add, but they upped the ante on texture quality, graphics quality. They added in everything you could possibly need in a PC port. They did make a couple of mistakes, though. Originally, the game released with mouse acceleration locked on. It's been patched, you can now get rid of it, and it's done via a command line parameter. PCGamingWiki.com has got all the information you could possibly need on this. Also bear in mind this game does have fairly high system requirements, because it is a really, really good looking game. Said I've still got to commend them on the amount of money they actually put into this, because they really did work hard to make a good PC port. They made a few mistakes along the way, but they did correct them very rapidly, and everything you need to make this into a great PC game is there in the box. As regards to what the game is itself, it's, again, a kind of survival horror game. You investigate crazy things going on, and crazy things do indeed happen. The game itself is very much based around light and darkness. Like, enemies can be dazzled and scared off via the use of your torch, or indeed any other light sources that happen to be in the environment. Needless to say, the torch requires batteries to be a bit more linear than it actually pretends to be. It seems more about exploration than it really is. There's kind of a linear path with a bunch of hidden stuff off to the side, so you'll find things like manuscript pages and extra batteries if you happen to explore around the place, but for the most part, it's, it's a fairly linear experience. It's pretty fun. The writing is good. The characters are great. I'm a big fan of the sound effects in particular. They're very, very atmospheric indeed. So for that price, I would say certainly, even if just for the fact that it was a great port and I think Remedy deserved to be rewarded for that. All right, let's move on, shall we? Sniper Elite V2, 50% off, that's $25. 24 euros 11 and 17 euros 49 in tier two. 14 pounds 99 for the UK. So we do get the best deal on that one. I don't really know about that price, honestly. The game's got its moments, certainly, but I think it just under-delivers as a sniper stealth game. It seems like the levels are far too linear. Every time I try to explore a level to find another way around a checkpoint or anything like that, everything just seemed to be closed off, so it forced me to go down one route. Taking people down silently is a little bit difficult outside of just sneaking up on them and breaking their neck. What I found is the enemies seem to home in on you quite effectively. If they hear something, they always seem to come in the right direction. Like, hang on a minute, how, how do you know that I'm here? I'm just hiding and then the bullets come in my direction. I'm like, I, I didn't do anything. The multiplayer is also bloody awful, I might add. Oh, that, that's just not a good thing at all. It is fun to shoot people in the head. I mean, it feels good to snipe in that game. The sniper mechanics are generally enjoyable. You could turn the difficulty all the way up to max and have to compensate for things like wind. But I did not enjoy this game as much as I hoped I would. Check out the WTF is for a more detailed look. Click the button on the left of the screen right now. The Gratuitous Battle Pack, 66% off. That is $10.19, 9 euros 51 in tier 1, 7 euros 13 in tier 2, and 7 pounds 81. So, congrats to those in European tier 2. That is a good deal for you. The question is, what does it contain, you might ask? Well, the Gratuitous Battle Pack contains Gratuitous Space Battles and Gratuitous Tank Battles. What it doesn't include is all of the DLC for Gratuitous Space Battles. There were a lot of expansions for this game, which included a whole bunch of different races. They are all 66% off. It also has a conquest campaign, 
which is also 66% off. You can pick up the Gratuitous Space Battles Complete Pack for 66% off, but it doesn't include Gratuitous Tank Battles. Now you're just going to be horribly confused, aren't you? Yes, and I don't really blame you. So Gratuitous Space Battles is a game about building ships and watching them kill each other. You don't really get to directly control them. You issue orders before the battle, you design your fleet in such a way so it supports itself, and then you set it away. And then at that point, it becomes a really nice screensaver, I suppose. I enjoy the game because I like tinkering. It also has a really good mod scene. As you probably noticed in a previous mailbox video, I modded a Star Destroyer into the game, and it was extremely entertaining. There are some rather interesting things involved in that. It is a very niche game indeed without question. The problem is, as I said before, that really without all of the race packs, it's not as good a game, and that involves you buying them all. The Gratuitous Complete Pack for Space Battles is a pretty good deal, I would say, because that has the five race packs plus the Conquest DLC. Gratuitous Tank Battles, this is a game I'm getting around to doing. It's on my list of games that I'm supposed to be doing. It is a tower defense game. It involves mechs and gigantic tanks. You can play as the attacker or the defender on every map. It has a very similar customization system to Gratuitous Space Battles, but it seems like more of a game this time around. This looks really interesting. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. The problem is I can't really do that yet. Already 66% off. This game only came out about a month ago. So that's a pretty damn good deal. If you're looking for a tower defense game, it could certainly do far worse than gratuitous tank battles. But I haven't got the chance to really show it off myself. So it's difficult to say whether or not it's worthwhile. There is a demo, however. So you might want to check that out. See if it's worthwhile. And then if it is your thing, pick it up. This guy makes games on his own. He goes by the name of Klifsky, and he makes some pretty awesome stuff. I love the fact that he makes all these niche games, and generally speaking, he does a pretty good job, so it might be worth supporting that. Onward, ladies and gentlemen, for Plants vs. Zombies, 75% off at $2.49, €2.49, £1.74. Without question, I would recommend this game. It's by PopCap, so it's fairly casual, but it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of depth to it. It's got a lot of replayability, a ton of different modes available in this particular title. I think if I've got one criticism of it is it starts off really, really slow. Like, it holds your hand too much at the start. It's like, come on, guys, I played a tower defense game. I can pretty much figure this out. The tower defense is interesting, though, because you've got essentially a bunch of lanes in a two-dimensional space. The zombies will come at you and you build stuff directly in their path. So you've got to think about building walls to slow them down, a combination of different plants which will do various different attacks. What I like about it is that there's a ton of enemy variety. There are so many different kinds of zombies, including dolphin riding zombies, including football playing zombies. There's a Michael Jackson zombie, which if I recall correctly, they actually had to change because it was horribly offensive. And there's also a zombie which pole vaults because why not? For that price, absolutely. Don't be put off by the fact that it's a PopCap game. PopCap games are actually pretty good. I, I'm not ashamed. I'll play casual games every now and again. I love Tiny Wings on iOS. I'm okay with that. You know what? I don't want to necessarily be stressed out all the time. I get stressed out enough as it is. It's a good game. Pick it up. All right, Crater, 50% off. This is $7.49, €6.99, £5.99. This is a squad-based action RPG with some similarities to stuff like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. It gives me some very old school feel, but it's set in more of a Fallout style universe. It's very colorful, but unfortunately it was plagued by bugs when it came out. It's getting better. They're constantly patching this thing. It's by Fat Shark that brought you games like Lead and Gold. They also brought you Hamilton's Great Adventure, which was actually pretty damn fun. This might be worth you looking into, honestly. I think the devs have got a really good attitude and they're continually updating the game and fixing it. As I said, it was a bit broken on launch. It's getting better now. It's all about running around with a party of three and getting loot, doing missions, and dungeon crawling. Very, very old school like that. But it's got that interesting post-apocalyptic modern twist on it. Interesting character design level design as well. As I said, I love how colorful it is and I love how kind of cobbled together everything seems. It reminds me a bit of Borderlands in that regard. It does have this really interesting mechanic where there's a really low level cap, so you can get to max level with your characters really quickly, and then you can swap characters out. The really low level cap is in there because there's permadeath. Once your character dies, you ain't getting it back, so you might end up recruiting a lot of different characters. It's intriguing. I will be bringing you a video on this eventually. It's Once again, this is one of these games that is on the list, but since it's an RPG, I have to play an awful lot more of it to actually get a good first impression, so it will come. It will come. Amnesia, 75% off. Five bucks, three euros, 74, 
£3.24. The Fear. <laughs> My god, The Fear. One of the scariest games I've ever seen. It is a survival horror game in first person where you have no weapons. You have a lamp. That's really about it. And of course, you don't necessarily want to be using the lamp all the time because it attracts evil monsters that are trying to kill you. For the most part, this is exploration and puzzle solving and being chased by evil monsters that are trying to kill you. It is terrifying. And honestly, you've probably already seen this game played either by me or by pretty much anyone else in the entire bloody YouTube universe. It became a bandwagon after a while. I'm glad to say that I got my video out before most people, but no, that's a bandwagon game now. Everyone's playing it and they're doing so because, hey, obviously you like seeing your favorite commentators get scared. It's a terrifying game. It's wonderfully atmospheric. It looks absolutely fantastic. But if you don't like horror games, avoid like the play because you will hate it. It is horror in its purest form, ladies and gentlemen. The Witcher 2, 60% off, takes it down to $16, 16 euros, ouch, and £11.99, not so ouch. This game is absolutely incredible. It is one of the best RPGs to be released in the past 10 years on the PC. It is one of the best looking games to be released ever for anything. It is an incredibly mature story. It is a hard game, it is challenging, it is well supported. They put tons of content in after launch all for nothing. These guys over at CD Projekt Red, they don't charge for DLC. They created one of the best stories ever. This reminds me actually a lot of Game of Thrones. If you want a story that is as mature as Game of Thrones and has that political intrigue, this game provides that in spades. It also provides really interesting combat, in my opinion. Some people didn't like it. I loved it. I love the amount of preparation you have to actually put into your combat. You've got to think about the situation before you go in it. You could take a bunch of potions before the combat, and that gives you a bunch of different buffs and abilities. You then need to think about traps and bombs and utilizing all the spells you have at your disposal. The combat is really hard. This game just rocks. It really does. I haven't played enough of it. I really want to finish this game. I've put a few hours into it, and I just loved every single minute of it, and then I ran out of time. I really want to play more. You know, I just might just take a week off the channel and beat the entire game. If you want more information on it, Let's Plays have been done by a bunch of talented folks, including, of course, OMFG Kata and the Yogs cast. Definitely worth looking at that if you want a more in-depth view, but Witcher 2 just rocks. It really is. It's such a good game, and it is PC at heart. These guys are awesome devs. They deserve your support. But it's not deal of the day, folks. Now, usually, I would say that it would be, but there's an even more amazing deal on. So deal of the day has got to be Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas for that price? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's great. $4.99, €4.99, €3.74 for an absolutely astonishing first-person RPG. New Vegas, in my opinion, was better than Fallout 3. Why? Because it just had a bit more to it. Obsidian, for all their faults, they tend to make buggy games, but they are more creative. I love their characters more, I love their storylines more than Bethesda. I really don't think Bethesda tells a good story, and when it comes to character development, they're pretty much hopeless with it. Don't even mention the ending of Fallout 3. God, don't even get me started. Fallout New Vegas is great. For those who don't know, it's an FPS RPG set in a post-apocalyptic future, and it's got a big-ass open world to explore. New Vegas rocks. There's no question about that. There are some issues that you may want to go to PC Gaming Wiki about, some performance problems, occasional bugs every now and again, but not enough to prevent you from enjoying this game. DLC is also available. As regards to what the good DLC is, I would look into grabbing yourself Old World Blues. That's by far the best. And this is crazy. This is the craziest DLC they've got going on. And I think that's probably why I like it the most. You essentially unwittingly become a lab rat in a massive science experiment. So that's crazy stuff. As regards to the other stuff, it's all right. It doesn't add a huge amount to it. Honest Hearts, Dead Money, Lonesome Road. They're, they're just okay, unfortunately. Uh, since they're discounted, maybe they're worth grabbing. But for me, I would say... Old World Blues and Fallout New Vegas are the two ones you should really consider getting, and everything else is kind of hit or miss. As regards to Fallout 3, that's also available. You can get the Game of the Year edition, which contains all of the DLC. It's still a good game. I mean, I beat the thing, so it can't have been that bad. I still really enjoyed exploring the world. It just has an awful lot of problems associated with it, including the ending. Thankfully, since this is the Game of the Year edition, the ending gets replaced by an add-on pack called Broken Steel, which is by far the best. 
if you've not played Fallout 3, you probably owe it to yourself to play it because you're still going to have a hell of a lot of fun with it. It's your typical Bethesda game in that, ooh, there's this wonderful world to explore and maybe there's just not quite enough depth to it. But it's still a great game. It's got a good ending now that they've replaced it and it's got a hell of a lot of content with those add-on packs. Bear in mind, you may run into problems with Windows 7. Check out PCGamingWiki.com for fixes in order to get it properly optimized for Windows 7 because that game has a few issues running on modern 64-bit OSs. Okay, folks, that's me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching The Sailbox. I'll see you next time.